In this video, we'll take a look at a method of drawing the human figure loosely and quickly with gesture drawing. We all know that a line can be used to define the boundaries of an object. Lines like these are called contour lines. A line that's just put on the paper without any interest or variance is a static line, but we can make lines much more interesting by loosening up a bit and creating dynamic lines. Dynamic marks can still serve their purpose by defining the boundaries of objects, but they're usually more interesting simply because they're more dynamic. When it comes to drawing the human figure, we can use dynamic lines to indicate the illusion of movement and make the drawings feel a bit more lifelike. When we draw loosely with dynamic lines and draw quickly, this is referred to as gesture drawing. Now gesture drawings are quick, they're short, and not very detailed. They're typically loose, many lines are used to describe the form, the hand consistently keeps moving, there's a lot of guesswork involved, and the overall goal is to create some illusion of movement or to create a loose indication of the figure or the subject that's being drawn. Now gesture drawings can take on many different shapes and sizes. They can be blocked in areas of value or they can consist entirely of lines. It's entirely up to you how you approach your gesture drawing. For myself, I like to start with a line from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet. From here, I like to define a line for the shoulders and the waist. Once these important elements are in place, I can use them for comparison purposes to draw in the arms and the legs and the rest of the parts of the body. Remember, the goal here is to draw loosely, so I'll make lots of different lines as I seek to find the form of the figure. It doesn't have to be exact, and it doesn't need to be anywhere near perfect. We're going for speed here. We're trying to draw quickly and loosely. If you're having difficulty loosening up, you may try changing the grip that you have on the pencil. Maybe holding the pencil in a different way will help you to loosen up a bit. Keep your hand moving constantly. Don't worry about stray marks and try to allow your marks to originate from your elbows or your shoulders instead of your wrists. Remember, we're not concerned about details, just the overall form of the figure. Let's take a look at another example. Here again, I'll start with a line from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet. This will help to ensure that I get the entire figure on the picture plane. Next, I'll look at the locations of the shoulders and the waist, and I'll draw lines to indicate both the shoulders and the waist. Keep in mind that these lines may curve. Then, using the shoulder and the waist as a guideline, I can go ahead and loosely fill in the rest of the information for the arms and the legs, and maybe even a little bit of information about the value. I can create areas of darker value to create shadow. It doesn't matter what position the figure is in. You can usually find that line from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet. This line may curve or change directions depending on the position or posture of the figure. Using this line, we can usually indicate the locations of the shoulder and the waist. From there, it's relatively easy to fill in the rest of the information. But if you're having difficulty, there's nothing wrong with actually drawing lines for where you see the arms and the legs. I know this is closely related to drawing a stick figure, but if it helps you out, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing this. You can always go back and thicken up the shapes for each one of the lines that you've created. As you may have noticed in these few examples, I'm starting with a very light mark in the beginning stages. As I continue through the drawing and become more confident with the marks that I make, the mark becomes progressively darker. This may be a good approach for you if you have a heavy hand and typically make a darker mark naturally. You can make a conscious effort to make a lighter mark in the beginning stages of the drawing where the marks are super loose and progressively get a bit darker as you become more confident with the form of the figure. As I mentioned before, gesture drawing is also about speed. So as you begin to create gesture drawings of your own, you may consider timing yourself. Set a timer for 10 minutes and try to create an entire pose in that time frame. Then work yourself back to six minutes and then four minutes and then try to create an entire gesture drawing in just under a minute. Doing this will increase your overall drawing speed and accuracy. Another exercise you could do is to go to a place where there are a lot of people. This could be your local mall or maybe a park, anywhere where lots of people gather. Sit down with your sketchbook and try to create as many gesture drawings as you can. Of course, your subjects will be constantly moving, so that makes the challenge even greater, but 
you'll be surprised at how many sketches you can create and how accurate you can be with your illusion of form. Now let's take a look at the steps that I'm suggesting here one last time. We'll start with a line from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet, keeping in mind that this line may curve. It doesn't have to be totally perfect, we just want to make sure that we get the entire figure on the picture plane. Next, we can locate a line for the shoulders and the waist, keeping in mind that these lines may also curve or could be at a diagonal. And then using this information, we can fill in the rest of the information for the other body parts. And again, if it helps you, you may even draw lines here, resembling somewhat of a stick figure. We can always go back over these lines and thicken things up. Remember, gesture drawings are meant to be loose. It's not about the details. They may feature many, many lines. It might be helpful to keep your hand moving, try to allow your marks to originate from your shoulders or your elbows, allow for some guesswork. It doesn't have to be perfect. And in your drawing, try to find the overall form with all your marks. And in the end, we want to create dynamic lines that indicate movement and liveliness. So what are you waiting for? Grab that sketchbook and start creating gesture drawings and watch your figure drawings and overall drawing skill and speed improve. Thank you.